Guys, this is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Live from the camp. Four, Five, the camp. Uh huh. This is Hi, Real you Fans Real Talk. talk. Real Fans Real Talk, we as real as you thought. Real Fans Real Talk, we the illest of course. Real Fans Real Talk, we the illest of course. Real Fans Real Talk, we as real as you thought. Real Fans Real Talk, reporting live from the camp. What we got is worth a lot, so put a tie on your plans On court, talking sports through the eyes of the fans With Trip Young, Emma Marie, Eric Sanchez You heard what I said, we elite Check the latest topics and stay ahead of the beat Keep us in your topics and uh -huh. we ahead of the Yo, streets It's Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend Backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in You gotta watch, this show is one of a kind Updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9 For the older folks, so even if you younger no matter what sport this show we got it covered it's filmed live in the middle of bk so ain't no better sports show to watch oh, to watch on thursday yeah 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 what's going on man it's another great thursday night real fans real talk we back in the building yours truly legend of two games man you know me and my man trip young we holding it down tonight we out here man shout out to him she a little sick right now she under the weather she a little under the weather but we're gonna hold it down for the last show of the year that's right we gotta we gotta make it special man yeah we do we so that's why we that's why we brought in brought in we got a gift for the people at home we got a, a very special gift now i'm legend of two games but we got another legend that's gonna be joining us in a little mm -hmm. bit that's my a main fact. man scoop b will be here that's a, a lot fact. of nba talk because there's some great games on the docket tonight trip i mean i'm only concerned about one game and you know that <laughs> Listen, we know we know as uh, CEO of the LeBron James fan club. That's the only game you're worried about tonight. Well, co-CEO because Uncle Uncle Shea is is you know you you Uncle Shea. Yeah, bringing a yak. Exactly. Yeah. Say, say no Just want to man. make it you know right. But they got a big game against the Bucks tonight. Mm -hmm. And then after that, they got the Clippers and Rockets. Another big game yeah. Western Conference. Uh, but before we get into all that, it's Week 16 of the mm -hmm. NFL season. All right, we got Saturday games. Every team that's on the dock is Saturday night is a winning team. Yes. Right? But we got the big ones. We got Buffalo playing New England. Big game. Big game for me, too, for, for fantasy purposes. Fantasy, right. Because the playoffs is going down right now. Absolutely. That's a big one. Uh, then as we go on throughout the, throughout the week, we got Minnesota and Green Bay playing. Yes. Uh, what are your thoughts, first and foremost, on Saturday's game? Buffalo. Shout out to Nesta, by the way. Huge Buffalo Bills fan. This is your opportunity to take the division. It's it, like it, it, even even with uh, how much Tom has been struggling, I just don't know if uh, you know if if they can beat the the Patriots right now. Like I, and that defense is playing great, but you know sometimes they'll like like you like to say they're wet the bed. You know the the, the Eagles well, put up term, twenty. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, it's, we on TV. Eric, we live. All right, but yeah, <laughs> but uh, you know they gave up twenty eight points to the Eagles. You know, right. so sometimes they can you know give up. That defense can can give a little bit, and then if the offense isn't playing like they should be, which uh, again, like we we mentioned that when Nesta came on to the show again, is they hit or miss. If they're clicking and and and, and they're not turning over the football, that defense can lock in some, some games. I just don't know, you know what I'm saying, with in this particular matchup with the Patriots, their defense is really good. And, um, you know, I don't know if, if Josh Allen is going to be able to, to get past that defense because you're going to have to score. And I don't know if they can uh, they can score on that defense or not. Uh, but so I'm, I'm taking the Patriots. I'm sorry. I agree. You have to take the Patriots in this game. Uh, Buffalo's offense hasn't shown me enough just yet for me to be confident yeah. in a money game of this type of magnitude. Exactly. Um, they played well against Dallas. They played well last week in the second half against Pittsburgh. Mm -hmm. uh, but those are situations where you're not facing a championship caliber team. Yeah. You know, no, no, no disrespect to Dallas. They're they're a feisty team. They ain't the Patriots. That's not yeah exactly. Pittsburgh out there with Duck Hodges and that ain't Bill Belichick either. Right. Pittsburgh out there with Duck Cameras Hodges, that ain't the Patriots. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm saying, yeah. So this is going to be their biggest test. They played them very tough the first time they matched up. Mm -hmm. But again, I agree. I think the Patriots win. I think they lock up the division. And then the real conversation becomes, can they lock up one of those buys? Because yeah. Baltimore looks like they're going to get to the number one seed. Yeah, I think that's that's a lot. That's, you know, I, I don't right. see that. I mean, I know they got two division games left, which can always be tricky. But I just, uh, the way the Browns are going right now, and then, you know, they, they finish off the season versus versus the Steelers. Defense is clicking. Lamar Jackson is, I'm, I, 
I, he's, I mean, he's got the MVP lock, I think, at this point. I mean, not only are they clicking, but, I mean, uh, we see the Browns. Some of the guys don't even want to be there anymore. Yeah. I mean, uh, Miles exactly. Garrett is done for the season. Obviously, we know about that situation. But Odell and Jarvis Landry this week, it was reported that both of them have uh, insinuated to other teams, get me out of here. Yeah. I want to be gone. So, yeah. So I, I think Baltimore. Will. I think Baltimore gets to the number one seed. Yeah. Again, if if New England can win this weekend, which we both think they will, then yeah. the entry becomes: Can Kansas City catch them? Because Kansas City has a tiebreak over them since they beat them. Can they win enough games to catch them? Would the Patriots slip up at any point down the stretch? Yeah, and I, I think that first of all, again, this is another game that I need to. I, I need. For fantasy for because I got mm. I got my homes as my starting quarterback right now in fantasy football. So I'm gonna need him to turn up and they're still in a position where they can actually get a bye uh in, in the first round of the playoffs. So they're gonna they're gonna be balling out, they're gonna be playing this this season. They're not taking uh no days off. Absolutely. Um, you know, so it's gonna be it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun weekend, but I think that I think the the Patri again the Patriots will win, the Chiefs will win, and they're gonna they're gonna win Keep conventionally. The yep. They have to, and again that's what it's, I think it's gonna come down to Week Seventeen as far as who's gonna get that first round by, and that is actually gonna determine how far the Patriots go this uh, in this playoffs. Yeah, I think it's really important for the Patriots to at least get to that hold on to that number two seed, I should say. Yeah, and at least force one game at Foxborough. Yep. Um, because they struggled against the Ravens, they struggled against the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. Um. They struggled against the Texans. Yeah. So, you know, those are matchups that they want to at least get one of those at home as opposed to having to travel on the road for that. Uh, Scoop is in the building. We're going to get into some NBA talk. You know what I'm saying? We've been waiting. I, we got so many questions for you, Scoop. Yeah. We're, we're very excited to have you on tonight, man. But yeah. I don't have any sources. Not, that's the rumor. <laughs> the, the rumor is you're just reporting well, randomly out here. Yeah, you're just pulling stuff out the yeah. sky and cats don't want to give you a just do. But you know we 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 recognize a legend when we see one, so we know what that what Thank that's you. about. We've been putting Thank respect you. on your name. So. Yeah, Thank you. I used to be an imagine editor at Respect Magazine, so there you go. <laughs> there you go, man. <laughs> really quickly, one more NFL topic, and we're gonna transition to some okay. NBA. Josh Gordon suspended again. Yes. Um. Again, we know. Um. I don't. I don't know if there's the right wording we should even use. His struggles with marijuana. I guess based on NFL. Uh, legalities. It is his struggle, uh, but we see Major League well, Baseball now. Be careful with that cup, bro. Yeah, I will. No, no, I'm saying because son is in. There. I don't want it to just spill over. But, there you go. Um, you know, we see Major League Baseball has now said they will no longer test for marijuana. Yeah. NFL still tests for it. Josh Gordon continues to struggle. We had Al Harris in here about two months back and uh, talking about all his business endeavors and how he feels about marijuana use. What yeah. do you think about Josh? Um. Again, and and we we're gonna actually uh, play the clip in in a minute of Al Harrison speaking on uh, on on Josh Gordon. Um. But yeah, I mean, listen, I, I think that you know, people a lot of people fail to realize, or or they choose not to to realize the the benefits of marijuana. Um. You know, as far as physically and uh, and and mentally, and obviously Josh Gordon is dealing with something because again. One thing, you know what I'm saying, yeah, we, 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 as far as Stephen A. Smith goes, you know, with his whole lay off the weed stuff, yes, I, you know what I'm saying, like, we understand you don't want to mess up the bag, you know what I'm saying, just so you can smoke weed, right. unless you, you know, Ricky Williams, then whatever, because he had a whole another bag, and then, you know what I'm saying, another business. But, you know what I'm saying, there's got to be something going on with Josh Gordon to you understand, and, and one of the things Al Harrington said was they know when the test is coming. So all you got to do is basically get through that one test and then just if you want to smoke, you can go ahead and, right. and, and do what you got to do. He is repeatedly getting caught, in, you know what I'm saying, with these tests. And it was another substance that they found as well right. um, besides the marijuana. But, so, you know, the marijuana is the one he's been getting caught with, you know, numerous times. So obviously there's got to be something that's going on. Um, Again, you know, shout out to uh, to Coach D, with, you know, and, and the whole mental health movement that she's been uh, working on. But you know, that's something that that, that we're gonna uh, need. You know, what I'm saying as you know, minorities, we don't always seek that kind of you know or therapy or or whatever. But obviously, he needs to talk to somebody. Right, Josh is a repeat offender. Um, we've seen it in Cleveland. We saw it in New England. Now we're seeing it in Seattle. Yeah. Um, it's unfortunate because he, he's got a, a bunch of talent. Yeah. I mean, you see him on the field and you know he's one of the elite wide receivers in the game when he can stay on the field. Uh, but he continues to have these missteps. And we do wish him the best. You know, I agree. I think the leagues should no longer test for it at all. We've seen too much yeah. um, 
in the research department to let us know that this is more helpful for your body than harmful. But until the NFL says we're not testing for it, you gotta you gotta abide by the rules. Yeah, you know it is what it is. But scoops in the building, man. Yeah. Can, all right. So have Have you heard in regards to uh, as far as testing in in the NFL NBA? Um, are they what's what's going on? What's the move? Are they gonna try to remove it off the banned substance list? I haven't heard anything. I think it was ingenious though for Major League Baseball to do it because. All athletes, yeah. you know, <laughs> I'm not outing anybody today. But what I will say is, you know, when you when you look at it, I mean, that recreationally, as you mentioned before, players know when they're being tested. I mean, even on the college level, yeah, um, oh, especially on the college know. level, they, they know. know, they know, because they're told. So, yeah, um, you know, I've heard some crazy stories. I've been around some things, but I think, you know, at the end of the day, um, I think I think the NBA should consider it, uh, yeah. particularly because they do it. You know, yeah, right. they know when this te- when the tests are coming, and yeah, yeah, they 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 they, they have to at, at some point. I mean, is it going to be made legal for recreational purposes throughout the country, and it's still going to be on the banned substance list? And so, so, at some point, they're going to have to, you know, what I'm saying, take it off the off the list. <clears throat> I mean, I I, I just think it's um you wasting money yeah, and and wasting money in fines if you just think that you know, like it gets old. It's almost like when you're a kid and you know you 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 smoke or you drink at basement parties with your friends. It's like yeah, you know you're not of age. You know you're not supposed to do it. You know you know your parents don't approve it, so you're going to want to do it more. So I actually feel like if the NBA would to take it you know to take a different approach yeah guys would actually maybe do it less or yeah. would just do it within moderation in season you know what it is i think that it's going to take a little while longer just because a lot of the people that do all of the voting they're part of the the reefer generation when i say right when they when they called it reefer an older mindset yeah and, right. and, and older so they can't they can't get is. past that just yet they still got that old old mindset so i think eventually they're gonna have, i mean it was the same thing with you know, t- tattoos at, at one point where they didn't want guys to, you know, John Sally, he did a bad uh, TV interview and he was talking about how he got fined because his tattoo went past uh, the sleeve. He could, they could see the tattoo mm-hmm. on his body. So, you know, and it took them some time to get to that. AI, you know, had to break the When he mold. was on a Hoop magazine, they, remember they airbrushed his tattoos right. in Hoop magazine? Yeah, I mean, it, it's... it's, it's yeah. So that's, yeah. that old, so that's, that, that's, that's, that's the reefer, the reefer mindset, yeah. you know, the old, old, old guys. But, you know, as much as you talk about the reefer generation I, I do think that there is a level of um i don't know I, I as 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 much as i may be new school I, i'm old school in certain things if the rule is the rule follow the rule um oh no and that's why i said we, right. we always say don't listen don't yeah, mess with the bag it. yeah just the smoke yeah and i think you know even you, with the big three you know with a lot of the cbd stuff that they're using i mean it's not marijuana it's it's yeah. cbd um cbdmd sent me like a care package over the summer for like like it was like lotions and like yeah, the gummies the were like up, yep. were like vitamins. Mm-hmm. Not, yeah, like you weren't getting high off of it at all. It was really and truly. That's just, one one of the things I heard and spoke about as well. Was yeah, right. you know the gummies giving up. They, he said they could do vegan gum, whatever, mm-hmm. and just after the games for the players, it's to help their, their their bodies. You know, what I'm saying cool down and whatnot. Do you feel Adam Silver seems to be very forward thinking? And a lot of things he does, especially now that they've embraced the gambling mm-hmm. um, and esports. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's something that's on their agenda within the next couple of years, or do you feel that's too far down the line? Well, I think it's something he has to consider. Um, you know, Adam Silver definitely inherited an NBA at a, at a great time uh, in 2014, and probably the biggest caveat for him coming in was was the uh, Donald Sterling uh, debacle with the Clippers, where you yeah. know he was banned for life, right. owning the team, and more. So I think. Uh, Commissioner Silver has always been very accessible to me, um, and even in conversation, I, I, I remember I did an interview with him, uh, and we talked about video games, and he talked about NBA Jam, and I think what a lot of people, mm-hmm. he's not new, but what a lot of people don't realize is, I mean, Adam Silver was executive producer of Michael Jordan's Come Fly With Me, mm-hmm. you know, so I was watching that the other day, and so like when you look at just his 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 reign as commissioner and his his his, his time studying under. Uh, Former Commissioner David Stern, hope he, hope he yeah. gets well. Get well, yeah, definitely right, get, get well, well soon. Um, you know, he's been around for a lot of it. So I, knowing him, I'm sure he, it's something he's 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 monitoring, uh, yeah. making a decision tomorrow. Mm, maybe not so much, but I think this is the process. C- I think come All Star Weekend in, in in Chicago, there comes a part where we do a media presser uh, with with the commissioner before the actual game. Mm-hmm. We're like a scrum of people sitting there asking questions. I'll make sure to ask him that. 
uh, while we're we're sitting with him uh, yeah. because he's always giving something insightful and, and, and something to think about, forward thinking as well. Going back to to David Stern, he he was completely against it, and even he started to kind of change his thoughts on on marijuana and whatnot. You know. Yeah, he did that interview and he talked about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I just think again that that generation that you speak of. Uh, you know, David Stern inherited an NBA uh, right at a time when, when Michael and, and all those guys came along. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, before him was Larry O'Brien. Uh, yeah. You know, in the NBA, you know, definitely has has uh, has been been flourishing during his during his oh, during yeah, his president or during his commissionership. And I think those guys were doing it then. It just it, I think, but I think that I think I think when he inherited the NBA. The NBA was dealing with issues like w with cocaine, like with Michael yes, Ray yeah, Richardson. It was dealing. Point. So I yeah, think right. the weed part is kind of very precautionary, just because yeah, of the because of that. the effects of what happened before. And and it's like it's two completely mm -hmm. different types of drugs. Yes, but I get it when you're dealing with. Uh, what was, I'm, I'm, I'm so mad. I'm forgetting his name right now. That right before the draft. Uh, and and he, there you go. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know. So when you deal with situations like that. And it's just like, oh, it's a drug. So now well, we got to be extra super right. duper cautious. It, it's that, uh, Scoop, and you brought up the great point about the cocaine use because that early 80s era was really destroyed. Um, John Lucas was a part of that, Michael Ray, Ray Richardson. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of young up and coming guys who were destroyed by the cocaine use. And I think for a long time, that's what held the league back from really wanting to embrace it. Yeah. They didn't want to stand by that and say, oh, we're okay with this drug, but not that but not, drug. Yeah. yeah. Oh, my on my podcast, I can't think of the gentleman's name right now. I've been I've been running the last 24 hours, but I, I had him on the Scoopy Radio podcast. He was a center. He was drafted uh, by the Golden State Warriors, and it got to a point where drug use was such a, a problem for him. He ultimately um, ended up going from playing as the starting center for the Warriors was the starting center on, on, on a prison team. It was almost like the, the longest yard. Mm. Yeah, um, that's and, crazy. and, you know, I mean, he, he was there at a, at a great time. He's rehabbed his life. Uh, I ran into him in Charlotte earlier this year during All-Star. And, um, you know, he's, he's doing motivational speaking and more. But he um, he just talked about the, the – it, it, it's almost like I think that era was the combination of just that fast life, um, upward mobility, and also not – having wise counsel or the right people in your circle. I think yeah. in today's sports, it's a little different because guys come in as brands and they know who their advisors are or they know who their friends are. And you still yeah. sometimes got to check those guys. You look at a situation like with Lonzo Ball and that whole thing with Alan Foster and the big ball of brand and, mm -hmm. and things of that sort. But, you know, I think it's a different time. Even the amount of time that players go out, you know, if they have, yeah. they, if they have their friends, mm -hmm. you know, those those particular people are coming to their hotel room is set up already versus back then guys were just running in bars and and flying commercial right. yeah and you know and doing was, what they it did was a, yeah. it was a reckless wild, was, yeah, wild west mentality because yeah. not only in basketball we hear about yeah, another sport football you know we, you know, we L hear the LT, stories of lt the cocaine cowboy yeah. <laughs> so like, it was it was crazy at that time man but the, but let's lighten it up let's get into some to some more current nba talk, yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. um before we get into tonight's games though um I want to ask you, what do you, what do you think of, of James Wiseman, him deciding he's not – obviously, he was under investigation with Memphis. He's entering yeah. the draft. He's projected to be the number one guy. Um, we see Lonzo uh, – sorry, LaMelo went directly overseas. What are your thoughts on some of these guys taking alternative routes and saying, look, I'm not going to deal with the NCAA. I'm going to get to the bag. I'm going to get to the league. I mean, it's a sign of the times. <clears throat> I remember when I was in grad school at Hofstra University, um, I did an independent study on uh, you know Brandon Jennings and Jeremy Tyler. For those who may not know who Jeremy Tyler is, he was a guy who for went who who quit high school after his junior year and played overseas uh, in, in Israel for a team called Maccabi ha Maccabi Mahaifa. Uh, B J Armstrong was his agent, and I uh, spoke with hoops. I guess you could say deal maker Sonny Vaccaro just about you know that process. And one of the things he said to me, he advised Brandon Jennings to go to Italy. Mm -hmm. um, he once said one of the things that 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 you're going to see, and this is like top of the decade, uh, guys being more in control of their destiny. And you started to see it with Jennings on the 
international side and you saw it with LeBron James yeah. when he took his talents to South Beach when he left Cleveland the first time went to Miami uh, albeit uh, a lot of these younger guys these college guys even in professional football uh, yeah. are now taking more control of their brand you saw it even Jabril Peppers now remember the Giants when he committed to Michigan he yep. first out wrapped uh, his his commitment to Michigan you know so when I look at that situation with um Mr. Wiseman I think he was caught in between a rock and a hard place and I kind of just think that's a a declaration of where the NCAA is right now, yeah. uh, particularly where you know we're having this ongoing debate about whether players should be paid or not, uh, especially when you know you're making a lot of money for your university. I mean, hell, we can't even play NCAA college basketball on EA Sports anymore. Right. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Thanks again to Sonny Vaccaro and Ed yeah. O'Bannon, right. uh, who bucked that system. <laughs> Sonny, Sonny, I want to say nice things because he answers my calls, but yeah. um, Sonny, Sonny has always found a way uh, to. Maybe get people paid to put his name out there as well, and you know I, I think well, you in this situation, yeah, I mean, but I think in this situation with Mr. Wiseman, I think he's living up to his last name uh, as we enter Christmas, and, and mentally he was a wise man, yeah. uh, and I think that uh, you know preparing for your game and doing what you need to do is a thing, particularly because. Uh, Mr. LaMelo Ball is going to be out till next month, so it may give more attention right. to him. Yeah. You know, will it be him or will it be, you know, LaMelo? That, and that and is... R.J. Hampton is out as well. Exactly. Yeah, so, yeah, two so of the other top guys are out. For he's, sure. he's still going to be a top pick. Him, mm -hmm. him taking off the rest of this year is not going to change anything. I mean, we see guys, you know, get, a, get an injury and they – I mean, Kyrie, he got hurt and he was still a top pick. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. guys get hurt, you know – leave and they're still going to be drafted where they're going to be drafted. Yeah, and I think it's a sign of the times just because of digital. Um, I mean, when you even look at LaMelo Ball, like he's out with a foot injury for a while. Uh, I had a conversation with uh, a buddy of mine that's actually a broadcaster uh, in Israel uh, when it happened, and he just talked about how you know he hurt his foot. It was more precautionary. He could suit up right now if he needed to, but yeah. trying to preserve but, himself. But the thing is, the scouts were planning to come out to see LaMelo towards the end of this month. They've got to alter their trips because nobody has set eyes on him yeah. uh, this particular season so you know versus uh maybe two decades before you had the Darius Mileses the the, the Eddie Curry's the mm -hmm. you know the 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 uh Kwam, how Stephen they said Kwame Brown the Kwame yeah. Browns of the world where you were just going off of word of mouth even yeah. Lenny Cook right yeah. you know guys like that they, so, they, they learned a tough lesson with Kwame Brown so <laughs> sure but hey man he right. got paid though still oh, no he's he, he, he didn't get the check he got the check mm -hmm. so yeah, that yeah, I mean there, there were a lot of guys um during that era who weren't ready but yeah. again, there wasn't the scouting that's in place now to yeah. go out and really do the research and find out if this guy's ready to or go. The, or the internet, where you could yeah. actually see. It was the internet, CDs, but it was just a different internet. Guys. I mean, we, we, were, we were transitioning out of dial-up with the AOL and kind of going yeah. into the broadband. Like, we're plug it, plugging our Sega Dreamcast into the dial-up still at that point. Right? Yeah, yeah. We Wi-Fi now. We, we passed that. <laughs> what, what are your <laughs> thoughts so far on the season? Um, it was a lot of hype. We were excited, as you were, um, with the diversity within the league. And it wasn't just mega teams here and there. There was really good teams all across the board. What are your thoughts so far as we're out of a quarter of the season, a little past a quarter? Yeah. yeah. What are your thoughts so far? Um, I like Toronto. I like Toronto. Um, and I like Oklahoma City Thunder. I think those are some teams, particularly the Thunder, uh, yeah. many people aren't talking about. I mean, you look at the Thunder uh, the other night. They came back from 30 down, and they did it the night before against the Chicago Bulls on Monday. Yeah. Uh, you know, you look at the, the I call them the quad uh, of Shade Gilgis Alexander, Danilo Gallinari, um, Chris Paul, yeah. and I'm missing somebody else. Uh, charge my head, not my heart. But those guys are, are playing uh, basketball well in a, in, a, in a city that many people thought uh, weren't going to f I've been using the word flourish a lot we'll talk about that with Jalen Brown in a minute yeah uh, right, but uh, yeah. but within a within a system in, in Oklahoma City that many people thought weren't going to be as good because you know Russell Westbrook was traded so you know yeah. when I when I look at that that's what I see but you know the usual suspects you're going to mention I mean you look at the Los Angeles Lakers who tonight are playing against the Milwaukee Bucks they have the exact same record and they've both are coming off of a loss yeah and their last game. Um, so, I mean, th those are two teams that you're paying attention to in the East and the West. Uh, you look at the Clippers. Uh, they're in second place. Kawhi Leonard is playing every other game. Paul George is doing yeah. well. And, you know, I, I was I was writing something last night, uh, and you guys can check out all my written work at heavy.com. Uh, I was writing about the Clippers the other night, and I was looking at their stat line. Like, Lou Williams is still averaging close to 20 points a game. Uh, you, you, you look at uh, you look at um, their center, um, Zubac. Zubac. Oh, Zubac. You look at Zubac. Zubac, yeah. Zubac is still averaging like what, like eight points and six point two rebounds a contest. 
you, you know, you, you, you look at Harrell, who's uh, Trez Harrell, who's arguably uh, going to be potentially yeah. the most improved player of the year or at least a candidate. You look at that. Then you look at the Miami Heat. I mean, seriously, Kendrick Nunn going undrafted out of Illinois and, yeah. you know, potentially being, you know, the NBA's rookie of the year. Uh, Tyler Harrell's you know, looking Harrell, good for them Tyler out there. Also. And they, they also got the other young guy. I can't think of his name now as well. The uh, shooter that they got Robinson. There, from uh, West Virginia. Uh, from mm -hmm. Virginia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Robinson. Yeah. Yeah, man. So, I mean, it's a lot of... I'm on Instagram live. It's all good. What do you think? <laughs> nah, but you know when you when you look at just just the, the parity of the NBA, I, I think there is diversity, but I still think it does come down to the West and the East. I do think that Philadelphia is missing some things, um, and yeah. I've always was. Well, they I lost was, the depth that they had. They lost depth. I talked to Wolves during the summertime, right before free agency, and one of the things he said to me was, "Do you realize like the Sixers are going to have to choose between saving or, or resigning Jimmy Butler, Tobias Harris, and JJ Redick? Yeah, they signed one out of three. Yeah, not good. Yeah, I mean, you did. You did. I personally think you overpaid Al Horford. Yeah, but, but at the same time, you still. I, I still like Josh Richardson, um, and I, I like you know. Yeah, I, I like. I, I thought it was a good pickup, but I did too. They don't have the depth at the again, and that's. I think that's going to hurt them long term. Mm -hmm. Right. Do you think long term it can work with Embiid and Simmons? Um. Yeah, I think so. I think. I think. Um, but it I doesn't think, get a jump shot. Who? Cool. And, you know, I, I'm going to tell you something. I, I think people oversell that jump shot thing. I, I think that sometimes, particularly, and this is just the grand scheme of the NBA at large, I think sometimes people write things enough and say things enough. Uh, my mom told me to stop saying the word narrative, so I'm being <laughs> conscious of that. When people say things enough, it's, people begin to believe it's truth. Um, and I think that when you look at... Uh, Ben Simmons, Jason Kidd didn't have a, just a fluid jumper to end his career. He won a championship in 2011 as a member of the Dallas Mavericks. Yeah. You know, so. My concern with Ben is that because he doesn't shoot the free throw so well, late in games he, almost, he becomes very passive because he doesn't want to get fouled. He almost doesn't want to initiate offense because he's scared of having to go to the free throw line and have to knock down some big free throws. And that's why I wondered, like, can it work long term? Because they need him to be his best version of himself for them, I think, to really take that next step. I think that big point guards have an adjustment period just like European uh, stretch three, four, fives do. Look at the transition that Dirk yeah. Nowitzki had. Look at the transition that Pedro <coughs> Stoyakovich had. Look at the transition that Andre Kirilenko had. Yeah. You know, so when you look at Ben Simmons, a six eight locomotive that doesn't have the shoulder or muscular build that LeBron James had in high school, and LeBron James built that even more. Yeah. But he's literally legitimately can get to the basket, carry the ball like bread to the basket. Um, you know, can get and players can throw involved. It too. Yes, right. he can. And then you have a guy in Ben Simmons, or excuse me, a guy in Joel Embiid. Uh, who could do what he does. I mean, seriously, he waited, you know, was drafted in 2014. We yeah. waited some years. They trusted the process, and, you know, the process is now, you know, in waiting. You know, and I, yeah. I think, you know, Elton got in there and did what he needed to do, you know, post all that drama that happened with the, the guy that yeah. was in, a general manager before. And, you know, it, it's a process, man. And I think that um, to answer your question directly about do I think they can coexist, I think that depends on them and, and, and the help that they have. You know, you can go to Wendy's and pull up and get the and get the get the chicken sandwich, but you still need the onions, the lettuce, tomato, and and hey, Maybe you have like, it right. I need the sweet <laughs> sour sauce. Remember, the, remember the fixing cups back in the day? You gotta, yeah, you need that. You need the, it's, it's a package the, deal. The Sixers need, need the that. fixing cups, man. Who's who's the king of LA? Um, nobody, because nobody's won a championship to, to yet in, in their respective um, on their respective team. It, they're they're co-tenants at the Staples Center. And, uh, you know, the, the battle of the fittest. I mean, you look at what Kawhi did last season as a member of the, of the Toronto Raptors. And, uh, you know, I think LeBron, I think when we look back on this year, if, if they happen to go to the finals, uh, I personally think they have a, a similar story. And by that I mean this. You look at uh, almost a year ago, uh, LeBron James on Christmas Day hurt himself in a, in a game against the Golden State Warriors yeah. that changed the, directory, the trajectory of the Los Angeles Lakers this season. They ended up getting a draft pick out of it that, that were, they were able to ship to get Anthony Davis. A yeah. blessing in disguise when you look at it. However, when you look at Kawhi Leonard's season uh, before last season, he was in a situation in San Antonio where he was hurt. Yeah. And he had a lot to prove because many people looked at him as kind of a rebellion or rebellious guy to, to Greg Popovich. And, you know, Popovich runs a spur system like a college system. And so when you look at Le 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 LeBron James, for example, uh, he sat out uh, from April into the beginning of the season, similar to how Kawhi Leonard sat out yeah. and mentally, you know, had something to prove. And so I think when you look at 
you know, the Los Angeles Lakers and LeBron James, he has the open space. Uh, Anthony Davis told, has told me throughout the season uh, that one of his goals is not only to win an NBA championship, but, you know, to win the NBA's Defensive Player of the Year award. Uh, he's, he's definitely playing he's like an it. amazing season. <laughs> right yeah, and then anybody you talk to, they, they'll, they'll, that Lakers team, I'm in contact with Kentavious Caldwell Pope. You know, he, he, he likes what they're doing. He's starting to find a rhythm. Um, that was with Danny Green on Saturday. And he, he told me he thinks that he's defensive player. Anthony Davis is defensive player of the year. But the biggest thing with the Lakers, Danny told me, was their chemistry. You know, like yeah. he's he, this team has, has really been uh, special for him and them. And I think, you know, when they play on Christmas Day, the Clippers and the Lakers, um, it's going to be a different Lakers team and a different Clippers team. You look yeah. at the Clippers. Oh, yeah, definitely from the first game of the season. Right? Paul George was out. You know, and, and Kawhi Leonard played in his first game as a Clipper. Yeah. You look at the Lakers, Danny Green scored 28 points, I believe, in that first game, was the lead, was the t was led all scores. Yeah. Uh, he was that game. LeBron wasn't where he needed to be. He, so He strictly played facilitator in that first game. Yeah. yeah. He wasn't as aggressive. Too much. We talked way about too, it, right. Yeah, way he too was much. not as aggressive as, as we expect him to be and we know him to be. Trying yeah. to get Anthony Davis, you know, involved and just, you know, guys in general. Right. Anthony told me last month um, that he was surprised that how well. He and LeBron James were able to click right away. I almost said flourish again. Click right away. <laughs> and um, he said to me that, um, you know, he and LeBron didn't work out this summer and uh, because LeBron was filming Space Jam. Yeah. And he said that LeBron made a joke to him and said, you know, we're like more peanut butter and banana. We're not quite peanut butter and jelly yet. Yeah. And, uh, you know. But Elvis likes peanut butter and, and banana <laughs> sandwiches. And he's the king. Or, you know, if they call him the king. Of, all right. So they say. Yeah, so, so, they, so, say, so they, they say. I know he, he took a couple of things, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah. <laughs> Let, let's get into a story uh, that's g gaining a lot of traction this week. You we recently sat down with Jalen Brown, and he gave his opinions on what went wrong last year with the Celtics, and then he kind of tried to backtrack on those on those comments. Mm -hmm. um, talk to us a little bit about the the sit down with Jalen and and what you see for the Celtics as well this season. Um, so I was with him down the street at the Barclays Center. Uh, at uh, I was actually doing. Uh, some color commentating with Bowler TV uh, during the high school tournament over at uh, Barclays Center South Shore was the local team there. Uh, had some other teams there as well, and uh, you know during one of the games I was trying to get him on the broadcast. You know while we were doing the broadcast, I got to give my guy Unqua, Unqua, excuse me, a shout out because you know he was the play-by-play -play guy. But basically, Danny Green came on. Uh, Jalen didn't want to go up to where we were, so I said, all right, bet I'm gonna come to you down and uh, at halftime we'll sit and we talk. And uh, he was like, all right, cool. So we sat, we talked. Uh, you know, he said some things about Kyrie Irving. Kyrie's a local guy here. And, uh, yeah. you know, I know Kyrie. I've covered Kyrie since 2013. And personally, you know, I get tired of just hearing all of the bad p press about him. That's not my dealings with Kyrie, but everybody's yeah. dealings are different. Yeah. You know, and I, and I, 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 you know, had a candid conversation with Jalen. And, you know, Jalen has said that those uh, comments were taken out of context. And, you know, uh, I understand his point of view. Um, because you signed through 2024, and uh, you know you you gotta you gotta you say that and you own up to it. You gotta sit in sugar honey iced tea for about three four years. Right. Yeah. I don't <laughs> I don't blame him. Right. You know. Yeah. And when he said it to me, you know, it was honest. Like I, I don't have a beef with him. Yeah. He's 23 years old, and uh, I understand the business. And um, you know, I was I've been doing radio today. I was on W E E I in Boston today. You know, discussing it. You know, yeah. they actually asked for my audio. I shared it with him, and you know, he said it. But I get it. <laughs> I get it. And um, but it was cool to kind of just see that level of candor uh, yeah. that he had, uh, despite you know how people felt in Boston. But the the, the other caveat of that is, I, I'll add, um, what he said was nothing that hasn't been said. Danny Ainge came out and said it was our fault that we didn't retain Kyrie. But, you know, I'll add that Jalen Brown also said, you know, whenever an all-star is in an equation like that, they get blamed. Like Kobe would get blamed. Uh, yeah. You know, Michael would get blamed. Uh, LeBron would get blamed. Like that's part of being an all-star. Right. Yeah. And so yeah, I, 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 think he, I think he spoke mo a moment of truth. It just sometimes yeah. in, a, in a, we got to keep it real but also be PC culture. Everybody doesn't want to receive what was said. Yeah, but the irony in it is, is as you mentioned, other people have spoken on this because Terry Rozier – during the off season, had made the same kind of comments. Yeah. It wasn't just on Kyrie; it was everyone. Right. Um, you know, Brad Stevens has openly said, "I didn't handle it the right way." So I, I, I don't understand him really backtracking. But at the same time, as you mentioned, he got the new deal. He's just trying to keep it calm. I don't want any issues here. They're off to a great start as well. And I, I'll add this: I, 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 I'm, you're no dummy. I'm no dummy. I know when I sat down with Jalen and he said what he said. <laughs> um, I, I'll tell you that. 
the Celtics had a five day layoff. He said that to me on Saturday. I wrote the, I, I sent it to my intern. I got the transcript back Sunday. I wrote it Monday afternoon. The New York Daily News wrote about it, and then it spiraled from Monday to Tuesday. Yeah. So you know, in that in that situation, I look at um, the fact that. The Celtics weren't active, so you needed something to talk about. Yeah, a little buzz up. And here's the crazy part. So the Celtics played in Dallas last night. I looked at their schedule. Between now and the end of the year, ironically, they play the Hornets. So that means now they're going to ask Terry Rozier about it. Mm -hmm. Right. Then they play Cleveland. So that's Celtics-Cleveland. That's going to be more talk. Yep. Um, on Christmas Day, I forget who they play, but then they play the, by New Year's Eve, they play the Hornets again. In between that, I think their home game on Saturday is against the Detroit Pistons. I was just looking at the schedule. So yeah, there's so a lot of, there's going to be a lot keep, more Kyrie conversation yeah, between right. now and then. But I just know I'm not a liar. So I had to say what I needed to say, and I still respect Jalen. No, absolutely. It was, it was great uh, journalism, you know, and reporting on your end. It had nothing to do with that. It, I, like you said, it kind of just spiraled out. Sure. And, and I, I think, think that. Even with the with the with the Celtics, I'm sorry. Um, you know, a lot of people forget. Like it was it was kind of just like everything kind of happened all at once. You know, mm -hmm. it was like all right, Kyrie gets hurt, Gordon Hayward gets hurt, and everybody kind of plays up. But that's you know that's the Brad Stevens things. He can get the young guys going and moving, so he never realistically dealt with a superstar yet. No, and, then and you Brad come back Stevens and bring Kyrie back, and now it's like we got to readjust and do everything all over. And Brad Stevens and Gordon Hayward had a familiarity from the Butler days. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, he's low profile anyway. Yeah, and then I also but it's a different relationship there too. Yeah, and I'll add this: you know, Kyrie knew that LeBron was not returning to Cleveland. He requested a trade, and I said this on the radio today. I said, um, Kyrie knew LeBron wasn't coming back. He requested a trade. Boston wasn't where he wanted to go, so that wasn't really his team. Anyway, yeah. You look at you look at free agency, right? In baseball, Kurt Flood made it fashionable to control your destiny uh, to where you wanted to go. Um, you look at LeBron James, um, and you know him taking his talents to South Beach was controlling the destiny that he wanted, and he's hated for it. By the same token, Kyrie came to Brooklyn, uh, a team that he grew up watching in New Jersey, and mm -hmm. you know told me he you know he thinks the world of Jason Kidd and more, and you know he took control of his destiny. So I, I think at the end of the day, he made a choice that was best for him and his family. Yeah, and uh, Boston is just a different animal because they're so passionate about their sports, um, and I also think that with Kyrie, um, Kyrie made the choice um, to you know in a press conference say. Um, you know, I'll return if you have me. I'm, I'm paraphrasing, right. but, you know, when I asked if he was returning, I'll come back if you have me. And I think that that whole thing is um, complex, a complexity yeah. for Celtics fans. And we also got to look at the, the media, too, because, like, you, you know, earlier, you know, we could say something about somebody, and then that's it. Then it just catch on, and, and now that's the, the narrative, <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying, uh, uh, of this guy. So now yeah. with two, three reporters in Boston – Say, oh, Kyrie's this, 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 and that. Now, oh, damn, you know what? Yeah, because he did leave Cleveland just high and dry, and he did, you know? And, you right. know, I'll add, um, when, I did the, when I was on WEEI this afternoon, uh, I, after I went off, you know, the, the hosts were like, what do you think about this? And then and he says, you know, if you really think about it, we have the audio, Jalen said it, right? He's yeah. like, but then he says one thing to New York, and then he says something else to Boston to refute it. He's like, well, what did you think? You know, New York wasn't going to talk to Boston. Like, it just it, it, it carried over, and it was just a back and forth. But from my perspective, it's done. I'm not yeah. saying – after today, I'm not saying anything right. else publicly about it. You know, I was interviewed by USA Today about it. I uh, talked about it on the radio, and you guys get the last on camera. But, yeah, yeah man, I, I wish Jalen uh, Brown lo nothing but love. I want to see him be successful. If you read the article, he talked about more than just Kyrie Irving. Like, we talked about Jamal Crawford. We talked about that game last Thursday against the Sixers, yeah. what he could have done differently. Um, we talked about uh, the perception of Kimba Walker, and say, he said he was a first-class guy. He told me, you know, he worked out with Marcus Smart, being with Team USA, and had a, yeah. a rapport with Kimba, having played in Team USA. Like, Check the article out. It's doing numbers, but you know, of course, Kyrie. That part is going to be the focal point, and Kyrie's not playing, so yeah. that adds another dimension to it too. And it sucks too because it's like you, 
when you get these guys to sit down, you want them to be open and, and just honest and be able right. just forthcoming about everything. And it's like, yo, you can get one, say one thing, and then it's just going up into a whirlwind. And now it's like, I'm not even going to sit down no more. I can't, you can't even say nothing. You're damned if you do, damned if you don't. It's a slippery slope. Um, you know, I had Rick Buecher on my podcast, Scoopy Radio, which is available on all platforms. Did 3.5 million streams last year. Um, and tell him, come on, man, get in the resume, man. man, so, man. Hey, cause he, cause he, nah, cause you do too humble sometimes. Let him know, you, man. You slid that in there real quick. Cool, right? Man, it was smooth though. He did it, but yeah. Last year, you know what I'm saying? Tell him, tell him like, give him the numbers, man. I mean, three point, scoop, Scoopy Radio, 3.5 million streams. It's doing streams. serious numbers exactly. out here, man. We, yeah. um, the podcast has had anybody from Charles Barkley to the voice of Siri to Mark Cuban to DJ Khaled to... Uh, a who's who. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean... Basically. Um, oh, we just lucky we can get school. Right, right. I, 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 one last to question on the topic, there. and we're going to transition off it. <laughs> you, yeah. Because you've known Kyrie, and you, you, you've, you know, interacted with him so much over the past, what, seven years? Eight years? What were your thoughts on his recent comments after he was booed um, in Boston, and he came out and basically said, you know, I, pay, I played this game for the purity of the game and not, you know, for the quote-unquote entertainment and the fans? Because it, that was... That wasn't taken well by a lot of people. What were your thoughts knowing him and understanding him probably better than most people who just read the comments in the, in the Instagram uh, post? I think Kyrie, like Kevin Durant, um, are calling people out for mm -hmm. stuff that's going on. And I think that Kyrie said how he felt. And, you know, some people are going to exploit that and say he's sensitive, uh, particularly because he didn't play in Cleveland that night, that one night, and then didn't play in Boston. But then was at the home game at, at Barclays Center, you know, so that's open for interpretation for a myriad of people. Um, I just think Kyrie's different. Um, I think Kyrie is we different. We know that he's, you know, with the whole earth is uh, <laughs> flat yeah, and stuff. Yeah, he's different. <laughs> he's different. And I think that um, that level of just different is, is just different. I can't really say it the other way, but I, I, I think um, – I think he just he, he and Kevin Durant are both similar, and they just want to play basketball. All the business and the, and yeah. the legalities that go with it, and you can't though. It's that's taxing. The thing. You kind of you kind of can't. Yeah. You just you don't have a choice. Yeah. The stuff is, is it's gonna be there. You're gonna you got to come to the media. You got to come to that podium at, at some point or another. You know the business is a big part of it. It would be nice, you know, yeah. for the players if it was just about basketball, but it's not. Mm -hmm. It's bigger than Nino Brown. You know. Yeah, and I, so I, I think when I saw to answer your question, I, I was on I was I was um, I was on Amtrak headed to Philly for Thanksgiving. I was going to see family out there, and I saw it and I said, "Ooh," um, and because I knew they had a home and home, so that was Wednesday, and then that Friday they played yeah. at Barclays, and I remember it was SpongeBob Day, and they had right. the old Biggie night. Um, he said how he felt. I, I, again, it goes back to my premise earlier when I said, you know, we live in a culture where we want people to keep it real but be PC at the same time. Yep. You can't have your cake and eat it too. Pick one. Then when yeah. he's honest, you hate him. And I, you know, I, <laughs> I, I, I think I think I think there's a level of um, things that are seen and unseen uh, yeah. as it relates to how people deal with him. I think, particularly him, his dad having a, a, a legend uh, in New York City, being from the Bronx, being from the Mitchell houses. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, and his dad's, you know, technically he's a second generation ball player. You know, he grew up with Mario Ellie. He got, uh, Ross Strickland is his godfather. And, um, you know, a guy who grew up in the suburbs of West Orange and then was still playing city ball. Yeah. Uh, I, I think he's, he's a suburban kid with a city game uh, and, a mental health, and a mental health era. Um, and I think um, he's just different. I think that a lot of people can't relate to him because they can't place him. Is he a hood kid? Is he a, right. is he is he a is he a is he a suburban kid? Is he too smart for his own good? Like people have these labels that they speak of publicly yeah. or privately, and I think that uh, when you're in a situation like him, like you said, you're damned if you do, damned if you don't. Yep. And I think you know even the level of I remember you probably remember when when Kyrie was a Cav and. Um, you know, there was this question about LeBron and being a father figure, and his response was, Jared Irving Irvin is my, is my father. Yeah, like, what did you want him to say in yeah. that situation? Like, yeah. maybe had you said big brother or something, yeah. when you it, thought it's a father? Just, it's, it's, I got a father. First of all, you ain't that much older than me anyway. Right. Like, how you going? Yeah, it's, 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 I think Kai's, I think 27 or, tw 27 or 28 at this point. Yeah. LeBron and I are the same age, so, you know, there's a, there's a difference there, but not by much. That's still big brother, little brother. Right. Yeah. I just think they don't know how to place him, and when I think of that situation i think that's why it's easy to place him in that kobe box yeah. they're two different games uh but they both were that k 
kid who had the city and suburban upbringing yeah. and had fathers who played in the league and were just very ultra smart. Like, they're students of the, the game of basketball. It's just different. Yeah. Listen, you're absolutely right. The only only thing I, I I'm a little I was a little upset about is that uh, we did have the 2K tournament this past uh, Saturday, the first round. Nobody used the Nets because you didn't have Kyrie or right, Kevin right. Durant. Updated roster, so we couldn't even, yeah, we couldn't even take the Nets. Um, but I do want to take a second. We got to shout out Twin. He has made it back to the finals again, so he's going for a four peat right now. Okay. All right, and uh, <laughs> shout out to uh, to Evan. Uh, you know, I know you guys wanted to see the matchup with the number one player in the city, Ricky Muffin, but he actually lost in the first round of the tournament to Evan, who's also a, a, a gamer. Um, and he will be playing Twin at the Barclays Center uh, in the final scoop. You know, we're going to have you out there for that, we'll there. For that one. Um, and it's, just, it's going down. We got a shout out. There's some secret footage, too. We got, because we, Ricky and Twin <laughs> played outside of the tournament. Ricky being the number one player in all yeah. New York City. Twin, the three-time champ. We're not going to tell you who won that game. Yeah. We, we'll release that footage at a later date. My sources yeah. tell... No, let me stop. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 it's cool. You know. Come on, man. I told you I had no sources. Bro. No, no, we, we'll say it later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Come on. But, uh, Scoop we being humble. Come on. If we got to report on it. It's good. It's gold. Exactly. We got to take a second. We do got to got to shout out the sponsors. Uh, big shout out to uh, to Kmart. They've been holding us down for the uh, past couple of two K tournaments, and uh, Petro as well. They were actually with us from the jump from the first two K uh, tournament as well. So big shout out to those guys. Uh, Soundview Liquor, the Rosado Firm. Um, you know, big shout out to all the sponsors that are helping us to make things uh, possible. We have been raising money for Family on Three. Uh, we actually we're going to be going out uh, this coming week uh, to the hospitals, giving out those uh, those gifts. We got we got a surprise. We're gonna bring we're gonna bring a special guest out with us when we hit up the uh, the hospitals as well. But I can't tell y'all just just yet. But um, make sure that you guys um, are following us on all our, all our social media so you guys can stay in the loop of everything that's been going down. RealFansRealTalk.com is the website. That's where you can get all the blogs, all the vlogs. Um, and again, Twitter, Instagram, at RealFanTalk. Facebook.com forward slash uh, RealFansRealTalk. And subscribe to that YouTube channel, YouTube.com forward slash For the Fans Productions. I think we're going to do a little overtime uh, today as well, and that's going to oh, go straight to the to the YouTube channel and straight up uh, onto the website. But uh, really quick, because I, I want to get back in. We got some, some more we basketball more talk. Times. And I need, to know, I need to know who you taking tonight in, in the big game. So we're going to get back to that in, in one second. But we we stopped by Kmart this past week. Um, you know, they show us a lot of love. So we just wanted to, you know, show you guys a little bit of what Kmart does. Um, Sierra, she's she went on location for us, and she chopped it up with uh, one of the project managers over there, uh, Glenn. I'm um, just talking about, you know, everything that Kmart is doing in the community and, um, you know, and what they've been able to do as far as helping out Real Fans, Real Talk, and Family on 3 with putting together the 2K tournament. So when you guys are ready in the back, let's drop that, and then we're going to get right back into this NBA talk with uh, with my main man, Scooby. Check that Scooby radio out, man. Stop playing. All platforms. <laughs> I'm at the Kmart store in Penn Station and I'm the personal shopper here with the personal shopper program and I want you all to come to the Kmart store here and come get the best deals that you could get, right? You're on RFRT TV and thanks for watching. Hey guys, it's Sierra Joy with Real Fans Real Talk and I'm here at Kmart on 34th Street where we had our first ever 2K Youth Tournament. Now for the past three years, um, Real Fans Real Talk has used their annual 2K Adult Tournament to raise money for the Family on Three Foundation. I have here the project manager, Glenn, <laughs> and um, Thank you for hosting us. You know, it came out to be such a great event, you know, between the popcorn, the giveaways, and the games, like everybody had nothing but positive right. things to say. Right. So I must ask you, um, how often do you guys get involved within the community? Well, hi everybody, thank you for the question. <laughs> well, um, Kmart always wants to start out with its customers, and uh, we always want to make sure the customers are satisfied, mm -hmm. right? We always like to engage in community events to make sure that we support the community. Right. So we do this annually, quarterly, 
and support any event that is good for the community. Right. And that's why we came up with partnering with you yes. to have this wonderful event that we just held. Yeah, it was such a great event. You know, the kids put out their 2K skills, you know, see them laughing and enjoying the game. How important is it for you guys to get involved with the community? Well, it's very important to us because it's a way for everyone to know that we still are around, like we still exist. Right. We're not going anywhere. <laughs> and we still have the best of product they want. Yeah. And we still have best prizes. Mm -hmm. And they could always come in to us. And Kmart is the only place place where you have an associate assigned to take care of customer needs here. right your rewards the points you get mm -hmm. we have an associate available in the store called a personal shopper who will take care of you when you want to buy anything and also get points back right. to save money Girls, have 30% off, 40% of more. Yeah, of course. These are very nice dresses. You can get this for my niece. There you go. There you go. And when we come here, we have more baby stuff. Can you find 555? Less than a year. Look how cute this is. And it's only 40% off. What's going on? Welcome back, guys. Once again, big shout out to the entire uh, Kmart 34th Street uh, staff. They always show us love whenever we pull up. Shout out to Glenn and uh, Jessica. Jessica actually flew in from Chicago just to come, uh, you know, chop it up with us because of everything that we've been doing with the 2K tournament and trying to get this event and, you know, dealing with the kids and whatnot, you know, and um, again, you know, last year they showed us so much love. I came down and um, and I just love telling the story because like they shocked me. I came down. They had three shopping carts full of toys for us that nobody expected that we're gonna have ready for us. Or I, we was that wasn't it, not on the agenda because they had already done so much uh, for us at that point anyway. And they were like, "Yeah, Glenn's like, yeah, you gotta go get your stuff." I'm like, "What stuff?" I go downstairs, they got in the, in the basement, they got three shopping carts full of toys. So we were actually able to add on an extra hospital because of that. We were also able to add on a uh, family shelter in Brooklyn. Um, so again, big shout out to Kmart and all of the, the sponsors that have been helping us to put things together. We will be back at the Barclays Center next month for the finals. And shout out to everybody that, you know, came out to play in the tournament. Um, continue to keep supporting us, man. We're not going nowhere. And... Uh, the legend is in the building still, Scoop B. We appreciate you for coming out as always. Thanks for having me. Uh, game time tonight, Lakers, uh, Bucks. Oh, 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 before we get into that, I, I've got to ask you, bro. I've got to, I've got to know, man. So we left off talking about the Nets, right? We've got to get to my beloved Knicks, all right? We fired Fizdale. Must we? We have to. Okay. We, we got, have we got to. Knicks colors on today, so we got to talk about I, I know you got sources out here, Scoop. You can tell other people. I know you got sources, Scoop. Come on, man. Now, Fizz, Fizz oh, is out the way. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, I like Fizz, but it, it apparently it wasn't working. Mike Miller is taking over. Uh, the team seems to be playing with a faster pace. Mm -hmm. They've won three out of the last four. Is Mark Jackson on the radar? What's the future for the Knicks? Because we've been bad for a long time. I mean, Mark Jackson and, and Jason Kidd were the two people that are, have been, you know, have been discussed. Uh, as it relates to Mark Jackson, what I can tell you. Um, it's that, you know, there's an unwritten rule with a lot of coaches. They don't like to take over for other administrations or other coaching regimes in season. In season, yeah. Uh, I know he and both Jeff Van Gundy, more so Jeff Van Gundy, because Jackson has never been in that type of situation before, but they're very prudent in, you know, that, that process. Uh, I, I spoke to someone uh, directly uh, tied to Mark Jackson mm, last week, and their thing is, you know, Mark wasn't offered a job, and you know, but Mark was, Mark was pro was, I don't want to say promised, but there was there were detailed conversations yeah. uh, with Mark and the Knicks, and you know, those didn't come, that didn't end up happening, and they went with Fizdale, and then a lot of that stuff, you know, has to do with you know his past tenure with the Warriors, right? Yeah, and you know, certain stuff I'm not going to talk about on camera, but basically there were things that went on behind the scenes with the Warriors. Uh, which is predicated as to why he doesn't have a job. And um, what I'll add is uh, the Jason Kidd part uh, is something that I don't 
from a couple of people that I've spoken with in Los Angeles, you know, he's happy in L.A. You know, the yeah. Lakers, despite being down 47-28 in the second quarter with 558 remaining uh, in, the, in the first half. Um, you know, he likes his position with the Lakers and, you know, wants to see them win a championship. And, uh, you know, it's kind of ironic as we're sitting here and the game is on, he's playing against his former team. And that can be a storyline potentially if this mm -hmm. is an NBA Finals matchup. So it's yeah. a lot to prove there. But, you know, Jason Kidd and Mark Jackson have been mentioned. And, you know, right now I don't think Jason Kidd would want to leave L.A. in that situation and come to New York yeah. uh, and play in that, you know, doldrums. Yeah. Right. Do you, do you think, because um, we've had the conversations in the past, do you think that kid is the head coach in waiting in L.A.? And that might be why he doesn't want to leave? Um, well, Frank Vogel is the head coach right now. So I, I think to answer your question, um, I had conversations with, with league officials back in November of last year. Uh, that were telling me that, you know, Magic Johnson wanted to hire Jason Kidd in season last year. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, there were some things with Rob Palenka going on and the Bus family that that didn't happen. But um, I also was talking about Anthony Davis and screaming mm -hmm. this in September. I'm glad it happened in June. But but you don't have the sources, though, so, you know. Yeah. But, you know, according to other people out here. When they going to put some respect on your name? I'm just saying according to other people. <laughs> you know, I'll tell you something. Um, last season... <laughs> And it's where a lot of people thought I was new. It really was a. Growing up, I went to I went to a myriad of different schools uh, between New York and New Jersey. Uh, and one thing I, in sixth grade, I t took a religion class, and the teacher said, "As long as you have something to prove, you have nothing to lose." And you know, people aren't gonna always believe in you, but you you got to keep going, and it ain't about them, you know. I'm in a situation now where I'm comfortably able to pay my student loans and, you know, pay my rent, do what I need to do. So last year was a blessing for me in particular, the last two years. Yeah. You know, you, you've, been heating, you've been heating up out there oh, in yeah, the streets. Yeah, you've been heating up. Yeah, man, I'm thankful <laughs> being able to, you know, do what I need to do. But at the end of the day, as it relates to, to basketball, it's a game. And I'm thankful to be living within my passion and doing what I need to do. What, what do you have coming up next? Because I know you always on the move. Every time I turn around, oh, I'm out here, I'm over here, I'm over here. What's up? What you got coming up? Honestly, spending some time with family for Christmas, and I'm actually going on vacation next month. Okay. I'm, I, I'm, I'm thankful. Well deserved. To, yeah. Thank you. You, you had a good year. Man. You deserve it. <laughs> Very good year. Very good year. What about y'all? What are you guys doing? Same thing. Family. Yeah. I got some family down in the uh, D.C. area. Probably go down there for a little bit. Okay. Hang out. You know, yeah. nice. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be up here. I got, I got a, um, you know, I'm, I'm under contract still for the next couple of years with LA, so I got to be around and watch that game and make sure everything goes. <laughs> to, uh, I, like plans, I, like you know? I like it. I like it. I like it. So, and then you know, once we get this one tonight, you know, knock these cats off tonight, we can kind of put a couple other things to bed and whatnot. You know, but I'm looking, I'm looking forward to, um, you know, you know, probably taking a trip out to LA. And um, just doing a little, you know, for the parade and what. I'll probably get on the float and with the guys and whatnot. And, um, Some big aspirations. Stand next there. to LeBron and whatnot. You see, I ain't put myself out there. Yeah. <laughs> be before we go, like we said, we, we, we're approaching, you know, like I said, we're past the quarter mark, obviously going closer towards the halfway point. Right now, if you had to make an early prediction, who would your finals prediction be? Uh, the Los Angeles Lakers and the Milwaukee Bucks. Oh, so the game we're seeing tonight. I do. Yeah. I think so. Okay. That's a good. That's a good pick. I mean, that's I a can, very you know, solid one. Yeah, uh, very solid pick. I like. I like that too. You know, I like that. I'm, I'm with you on that one. You know, let's go. You already know, man. Another great Thursday night. Real fans, real talk, man. Legend Scooby, we appreciate you coming through and kicking it with us, man. That's a fact. Trip Young, Legend of Two Games, man. Hey, everyone, have a Merry Christmas. Have a Happy New Year. We'll see you guys in a few weeks when we're back on the air. And for the meantime, enjoy the games tonight and this weekend, man. We out of here. Peace.
Johnny Floss, bringing a different type of blend, backing up Misfit to make sure y'all tuned in, you gotta watch, this show is one of a kind, updates on your TV screen from 8 to 9, for the older folks, so even if you younger, no matter what sport, this show, we got it covered, it's filmed live, in the middle of BK, so ain't no better sports show to 